Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Kai and today I have for you another haul video. So this package here is a package from Zillaboo. So I talk about Sweetie Nail Supply a lot on my channel. I do have an affiliate code with them. They are an amazing importer of Korean and Japanese gel brands. They are based out of Canada and Zillaboo is another importer of Korean Japanese gels, but they are based here in the US. Um, I'm not affiliated with them. I would love to be at some point, um, but I've been ordering from both Zillaboo and Sweetie Nail Supply for quite some time now, just on my own, even before Sweetie Nail Supply reached out to me. And they do serve different purposes. So like a lot of the brands that you can get from Zillaboo, they're not available through Sweetie Nail Supply at least here in the US and vice versa. So um, I use both shops for different brands. Um, I assume it has to do, like don't quote me on this, but I'm sure it probably has to do with like agreements between brands and importers. But I did pick up some products through their Zillaboo anniversary sale. And so I just wanted to show off what I got and do some swatches with you all. So thank you so much for being here and let's get into it. Okie dokie. So first of all, I figured maybe we can get the kind of boring stuff out of the way. Um, I went a little crazy and I bought some brushes. So here are all of the brushes that I purchased. I will go through each of them one by one and show you. So the first set of brushes I ordered all from the same brand. This is the brand Leaf Gel. I already have their Leaf Gel long liner here. This is one that I use all the time absolutely all the time just because look at the tip of this it is just so 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 skinny so good for any sort of line work um here let me compare it to another brand that i have so like this one here is just a random liner brush that i think i got off of i don't know timu or something like that and granted this one is longer than the leaf gel liner brush but Oh my gosh, look at the difference in width. I don't know if you can see that there too well, but the leaf gel brush is, I swear, like maybe a third the thickness of this liner brush. And this one's pretty skinny. Like if you're looking at this on its own, um, it's like, oh, that's a really nice, long, skinny liner brush. But then you compare it to something like this and it's just, this one is so darn good for detailed line work anything where you need it like a long smooth line it's just amazing so i will be doing a giveaway at some point here soon i don't really want to announce the full details yet because i personally don't even know them myself but it will be a giveaway of some of like my favorite products so i did actually go ahead and pick up another one of these so this is that Leaf Gel Long Liner Brush. I'm not gonna take it out of the packaging because I have my own, but this will eventually be in a giveaway. Um, it might have to wait until like my 3000 subscriber giveaway because um, overall the giveaway is going to be uh, quite pricey because I do include some like really nice products, some nice favorites of mine. Um, so I might save it for 3000, but Hey, if you're somebody who watches my channel pretty often, keep watching, keep commenting, um, and I will announce the details of that giveaway soon. So yeah, I got another one of these. And then I also picked up the small liner brush. So I wanted this for those finer details where you don't need a really long brush because the strokes are gonna be smaller. You're working in a more confined area. With a longer brush, they're really good for like smooth lines, smooth curves. But if you're working in a really small area and you need really fine details, it's better to have a shorter brush. You just have more control that way. Rule of thumb is the closer your hand is to the tip of the brush. So like the closer you hold it down here um, or the smaller the brush is, the more control you're going to have and the finer the detail. When you want to do like a um, smoother line, you want a longer brush and you want to hold the brush a little bit further back. And that's how you get like a really nice smooth line. You can use your, your fingertips to kind of guide it. So 
I wanted a short detailer brush here, so I picked up the small liner brush. It's really nice and skinny. I think it's going to be great for hand painting. My camera can barely even focus on it because it's so small. But yeah, I absolutely love the leaf gel brushes. They're amazing. These are a um, Japanese brand leaf gel. And I love that they come in a cap. So each brush has this nice cap here. And I like this because I've started storing a lot of my brushes with a little bit of base gel in the bristles. I find it just keeps the brush really nicely shaped. And if you're going to do that, you want to make sure that there's no chance for the brush to be exposed to UV light so that you don't ruin your brush by carrying on um, the base gel. So these ones here that have their own caps with them make it really easy to soak them in the base gel and then just store them away and not have to worry about accidentally exposing them to sunlight. And lastly from Leaf Gel, I got this border brush here. And this one is meant for doing thicker lines. So it is a long length, see here. And the tip of the bristles is square, but it's a very skinny square profile. See that there? And it's supposed to be good for doing like a checkered pattern or any sort of like thicker stripe on a nail. Sometimes when you're using like a, a regular liner brush where it has that the rounded tip, it makes the lines that you paint a little bit uneven if you're trying to get like a thicker line. So this one, because it is a square tip, is meant for getting those really nice crisp thicker lines. Super excited to try this. I also thought it might be good for like turning on its side here like this and doing like a, a leaf shape of some sort. We'll see. I'll have to play around with these a little bit more and get back to you on exactly how they work. But super excited to try this one. And I appreciate that the brushes have like the, the full name here so that you know which one you're looking for since they all do have the same cap. And I like these little plastic covers too. I keep these. I know a lot of people throw them away, but I keep them because it just adds an extra layer of protection. If I do put like a base gel on the brush to store it away, I know I'm not going to be, when I put the cap on, like jamming the bristles into the sidewalls of the cap and getting it all um, gunked up in there. So yeah, super happy with this. I will say it's not cheap. Um, the Japanese Korean brands, they tend to be a little bit more expensive. I don't mind though because I personally think that the quality is there and I'm willing to pay that little bit extra to get a quality product and I also know that um, one of the reasons these are probably slightly more expensive is because these companies like Silibu, like Sweetie Nail Supply, they do have to import the products so they're probably paying extra tariffs, taxes on these products and so the markup is slightly higher because they are import. Our next nail brush is from the brand Izemi. So I wanted like a really nice pointed round brush for doing like flower petal art, for getting leaf art. Um, so I, I picked up the Izemi. This is the Art 600 brush. I've never tried an Izemi brush before. I have the Diami brushes, which I really like from Sweetie Nail Supply. I have some of their like short liner brushes but I haven't tried Izemi before. I do have their top coat, their resin top coat, the non-wipe, and it is crystal clear. There's barely any yellowing. I have been experimenting with it and I compared it to some of my other top coats. At first I wasn't sure because there was still a little bit of yellowing, but in comparison, so clear. But here is the Izemi brush. It's got a really nice matte handle, I will say. I love this color. Again, Comes with its own cap, very nice. Comes with a little plastic guard, which I will be keeping. And here's the brush itself. It's got a really nice fine point at the end. So hopefully I'll be able to get some good like paint stroke details with that. Yeah, I'm excited to use this one too. It definitely needs clean. It's got that uh, new brush gunk in there. But we shall see. Excited to try this one out. Okay. 
And last but not least, I got this little mini oval brush from, I believe it's Reposo. Reposo, I don't know. I, I'm gonna say Reposo, uh, but I might be pronouncing that incorrectly. So this is the Reposo mini oval brush. And I got this one because again, I'm always looking for a nice brush to do like leaf patterns, flower petals, and I thought this one would be really good for doing something like that. So there's this teeny tiny little oval brush. So it's not pointed so you can get a nice rounded edge with it, but it's super small and delicate for getting really small details. So yeah, I'm excited to try this one out too. Again, this is the miniature oval brush from Reposo. And like always, it comes with the little protector and its own cap. I just, I love a brush with a cap. All of these are so aesthetically pleasing too. I'm a big aesthetics person. Um, I know in the grand scheme of things, like looks don't necessarily matter and you are paying a premium for maybe a more premium design, but hey, this girly, uh, she's into aesthetics, okay? She likes the look of a nice product. I will say though, that only goes for art supplies and like tools that I use and decorations. I don't own any sort of branded um, clothing or like a, a really nice branded bag. I wish I had the money for that, definitely. I don't, but when it comes to my art supplies, my products that I'm going to be using for nails, I'm okay with splurging a little bit. Okay, so for the Zillaboo anniversary sale, they had a special promotion going on where if you spent over a certain amount, there were some little free goodies that you would get. Um, did that trick work on me? And did I spend over $200 <laughs> um, partly to get the free goodies? Yes, it did. Um, so I did get the little freebie pack. Uh, I was excited about this because it did say it was going to come with a promotional leaf gel brush. So this is the last of the brushes I got and I wasn't even sure I would be getting it because it was like a wall supplies last type of deal. But here it is. So this is their premium limited edition flat brush, which I wasn't sure what kind of brush I would get. It just said it was a, a leaf gel promo. And I don't have a leaf gel brush that's quite like this. It's just a really nice flat ended brush. Here's what the tip looks like. It's much thicker than the border brush. I would say probably twice as thick. Seems like the bristles are nice and soft. Yeah, really happy to have this as well. And the color is so cute. I'm used to the leaf gel brushes being like that one, that one um, solid white color with the blue font. But this one is a pretty blue color with white font. <laughs> Small distinction, I know, but hey, the little things impress me. So yeah, that is the last of the brushes that I received. Um, my luxury brush, uh, my luxury brush collection is definitely growing. These are all of my like nicer brushes that have their own caps on them. Um, I got this little sorter off of Timu. I'll try to remember to link it below, but I love it because it's angled so I can set it on my desk, throw my brushes in upside down since they all have caps and be able to see like on the backside easily, which one's which, because I do have one of those like cups that you can put your brushes in. But my problem with that is when you put your brush in the cup, and you stick it in handle side down, then all of them sitting in the cup have the names covered. And so it's hard for me to see which one I'm reaching for. But with this, I can just um, like turn around the handles, see which one I'm looking for and pull it out. And it's super easy for me to find what I need. Okay, back to the freebies. Not quite as exciting, but still grateful to have them. I have the Eco Bee mask so this is a face mask which i definitely need um i have like two products that i use for skincare a moisturizer and a um like night routine serum um i 
would love to get into more skincare. I just don't currently have like the time, I would say. Uh, I also know it can get kind of expensive. So if any of you have any recommendations for really nice skincare that's also budget friendly, let me know because God knows my skin needs some help. <laughs> I definitely have like oily combination dry skin. So sometimes I break out pretty easily. It's mostly hormonal, but I definitely need some skincare tips. And then it also came with these three sample colors. So these are from Mythmillo. I actually don't have any of their polishes. They're little teeny tiny samples so that I guess you can try out some of the colors. I don't necessarily want to get into these now because I might want to use these for like a specific look, but it looks like it's a maybe a black, a pink, and a red, which, you know, hey, black, pink, and red are some really good basic nail colors. I think they're some of the most popular along with like a white. So I am excited to try these out later on. So up next, I have some Aurora film here, some Aura film. This is from the brand Bonnie B. I've always wanted to try the Bonnie B Chrome powders. Um, they look really gorgeous. There are a lot of different iridescent colors and they look really high quality. So I've been wanting to try the Bonnie B Chrome powders. I didn't pull the trigger this time just because I was already spending quite a bit on all of the other things I purchased, but I did get these sheets because they were on sale. It comes in like a, a pinky color, a blue color, and then a yellow color. So it's like a pink to yellow shifting sheet here, a purple to like green blue shift sheet, and then a blue to yellow shifting sheet. Yeah, I'm excited to use these. Okay, up next is another thing that I got for a giveaway. So I'm not gonna open it. This is the Jin B Crazy Top Coat. This is the sick version. I will go ahead and pull out mine to show you, but I did get a 25 gram little container of this for my giveaway because I absolutely love this stuff. It is the perfect consistency for 3D swirls for that kind of thing. It is non-wipe, which is amazing in a structured gel because you want it to be able to hold its shape and if you have to top coat it, you might get rid of some of the texture. So this is my go-to for encapsulating gems, um, doing encapsulations of anything really on top of a nail and for doing 3D swirls. So I got this for my giveaway. Here is my personal bottle of this. Um, I got it from Sweetie Nail Supply. I will say it is cheaper from Sweetie Nail Supply, though with the sale going on from Zillaboo, and since I was ordering other stuff from there, I, I went ahead and picked it up. So this is the Jinbi Crazy Top Thick. I try to make, keep mine kind of clean, um, but it is it is still a little messy. So sorry about that. But here's what it looks like. As you can see, it does move. Like I can show you the consistency here. It does flow fairly quickly, but when you have like a little dollop of it on a nail, it stays in place pretty well. And it has really good clarity to it. There is a little teeny tiny bit of yellowing. It's not severe enough to really notice unless you're doing like a, a crystal clear nail, but I'm not bothered too much by it. You can only really tell if you're going to encapsulate something um, that's like white or I would say blue because blue is kind of the opposite of yellow. Otherwise, huge fan of the crazy top thick. In terms of other textured gels, I did go ahead and pick up the Diami powder gel. So this is supposed to be a gel that you can use for chrome powders to give it a really nice texture. That's why it's called the mirror texture. Supposedly, this is new, at least to Zillaboo. It was on their, uh, their new list. And I am hunting for the best like textured chrome gel that you can use. I, I do really like the Crazy Top, don't get me wrong. Like this works well with chrome powders, but it doesn't exactly hold texture. It's really good again for swirls because it smooths out 
but it's not thick enough to really hold a nice texture. So I thought I would try this. I, I will eventually do like Chrome 101 and my tips for the best textured gel. I'm just, I have some products to try out first to really give it a good go. And then I'll do that review for you all so that you can save money and only buy one of these because at this point I have purchased quite a few options for like a, a, a textured mirror gel. So this is what it looks like. It's only five grams. So it is kind of expensive for five grams, but is what it is. Let's see what this looks like here. Yeah, this is thick. I can already tell. So here is what it looks like. It is slightly cloudy, which is somewhat typical of like a nonstick formula. You get that little bit of cloudiness there. I don't know if you can see it on the lid. How the polish is kind of like, it's got that blue cast to it, but it does look like it's going to hold its texture fairly nicely. So if I tilt this over, I can already see it's not moving like the Jinvi Crazy Top is. So I'm hoping that this will hold brush strokes really nicely and give me that really textured chrome effect that I'm looking for. Yeah, we'll see. There is a little bit of movement. Like it's ever so, so slight of a movement. So it's not like a, like a sculpting gel where it's gonna be completely stiff but I'm excited to try this out for sure. Okay, very cool. Again though, this stuff was not that cheap. Uh, I think it was like before the sale, 20, $20 or something like that, 22 maybe even for five grams. So uh, pricey, we'll see if it's worth it. I am not sure yet, but I love the packaging. The packaging is very, very cute. This blue, um, this blue pink packaging here, very adorable. And for more 3D texture work, I picked up the Pala First Street Gels. So these are also non-white. They're supposed to be good for embossing patterns or putting your chrome on top of. That is partly what they're advertised for. So I did get a white and a black version. Now you want to talk about tiny. These are tiny, but they're so cute. Let me open it up here. So here's what it looks like out of the box. It is so precious. I am actually kind of like blown away by how cute these little pots are. Um, they're only three grams. Let me confirm that. What does it say here? Yeah, three grams. So you really don't get a ton of product, but I would say for like a um, an embossing gel, that's a decent amount. Um, you're not going to be using it like to cover a whole nail. It's most likely going to be for small details for chrome work. So I think these, I got a set of two and it was on sale for 18 for the two of them. So what? Six grams for 18. Not that bad, actually. Still cheaper than um, this one, I guess, when you take into account full, full gram amounts. But here's what it looks like. And this stuff, um, I can already tell is thick. Like, I turn this over completely. I'm gonna let it sit for a second. That's not moving at all. That is not budging. So this is definitely going to be good for getting that textured, embossed look for any sort of chrome work where you really want it to be 3D, where you want the lines to stick out. So, yeah, super excited to try this. And I got it in, again, white. And let's look at the black. Oh, good. Okay, I was worried that they were going to be the same packaging, but they aren't. This one has the white sticker, this one has the black sticker. Oh, okay. That is very dark. I almost like can't see it in the pot because it's the same color as the pot. Uh oh, it does have one little fuzzy in there. Okay, let me close that up before it gets more fuzzies. But yeah, here are these two. These are actually so precious. Um, I can't get over how cute they are. I think actually it's the little boxes that do it for me. 
Look at how tiny. Oh, it's so adorable. Part of me wants to keep the little boxes just because they are so cute, but like, what am I gonna do with this? I don't know, it's adorable though. All right, for the sake of you all, I will swatch this on just a little orange wood stick here just to show you the texture. There we go, there's the texture. You can see that little peak there is staying where it's at. It's not smoothing out really. Well, can you focus maybe? It smoothed out ever so slightly, but you can still see that little peak there. So I can tell that this is going to be really good for texture. Yeah, see? Still got some definition there. Okay, very nice. Okay, so I did pick up some of this Resin 99 from Izemi. I had heard amazing things about the non-yellowing properties of the Izemi non-wipe top gel. Um, not non-wipe, sorry. This is a wipe top gel. And specifically, the wipe top gel is supposed to be more clear and not have quite as much yellowing. I tried it on a set and I... I wasn't sure if I noticed a big difference, but I recently did a little test with this gel versus like another favorite of mine, and it is definitely much less yellow. Let me show you here on a little like swatch card. So this is one of my favorites right now. It is the non-scratch, non-wipe top coat from D-Gel. It's just a super nice thick formula. I did just recently do a black set though, and I noticed that it does have a slight blue sheen to it. So I don't recommend this over like a really dark color or else it's going to show. I mostly paint in like lighter colors and pastels, so I didn't notice that up until this point. I still really love it and I'm going to continue using it because I love how it performs. But just note that maybe you don't want to use this over a dark color. But here is the Dia Gel. And it's hard to see here. Uh, <laughs> this might not be the best uh, demonstration of this. And then here's the Zemi Resin. This stuff is thick. It is the high viscosity resin. They do come in three different viscosities. There's the high, the mid, and the low. I personally got the high because I mostly plan on using this to encapsulate things where I want the overall finish to be really, really clear. So I did get high, but there are three viscosities available, which is nice. So here's the comparison before carrying. Let me, I wonder if turning on one of these lights will help. Okay, I, <laughs> oh, this is hard. I swear the one on top is more yellow. It's not really capturing it on camera very well. Let me cure it and maybe that'll help. This might be something I have to show like in daylight. When I was testing it out a bunch of my top coats in daylight earlier, I could really see a difference in the yellowing. But yeah, the only downside to this is that it is a white formula. So you do have to go in and cleanse away the tacky layer. It still seems to have a nice shine, even though it is a white formula, but it is just an extra step and you can't really use it to encapsulate something if your finished product is going to have a lot of texture because then you'll have trouble like getting in between the little grooves and crevices to wipe away the tacky layer. But yeah, it does have really nice clarity, which I appreciate. Okay, so here's the comparison after curing. Hopefully you can see the difference here, but this top one in person is quite a bit more yellow than the one here. Yeah, I think you can see it now on camera. So this is the Degel Signature and this is the Zemi. Again, this one's not white, whereas this one has tacky layer. I don't want to touch it actually because I don't want to dirty my gloves. But yeah, and especially if you're going to be using a thick layer, the yellowing is going to be even more severe with um, non-white formulas. So I would say something like this is good to have just for those specific instances where you want a really clear finish. 
Okay, so now we can get into the fun bits, which are the polishes. So I did pick up four different magnetic polishes that I will go ahead and swatch. Two are from F Gel, um, from the nail, sorry, and then two are from Reposo. And can I just say that I appreciate so much that uh, Sweetie Nail Supply and Zulubu, they both package their products in bubble wrap so that it ensures your product arrives totally fine, no breaks, no scratches. And I reuse this bubble wrap in my press on orders. Um, they're like the perfect size actually for putting my little press on containers in. So for me personally, I love getting this bubble wrap because that means that I don't have to buy it myself. Let's start with the Reposo Magnetic Gels. Now I haven't tried a Reposo Magnetic Gel yet, so I'm excited for this. I always see them on the website and they look gorgeous. I just haven't pulled the trigger yet, so I'm very happy to try this out. So here is the first one. This is Magnetic Gel number eight. I believe this is from the Summer Collection. I'll leave the links to everything down below if you wanna pick it up for yourself. So again, this is number eight. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, the Proso Magnet Pulling Summer Collection. I love the Autumn Collection. Oh my gosh, if I had the money, I would buy the whole Autumn Collection. It is just so gorgeous, but I picked up only a couple this time. And this is this really pretty like iridescent purple magnetic gel. Oh, look at that. That is gorgeous. It is like a, a pinky purple, I would say, with a more blue purple pigment in there. That's really pretty. Super excited to use this. Let me go ahead and swatch it for you all. It is quite a sheer base, which I was expecting because the summer collection is more of a, um, a sheer base magnetic gel. So I'm just going to do one layer here. See what it looks like. That is gorgeous. Oh my goodness, I love this color. It's like a really gorgeous purpley pinky shade, almost like a mauve shade, I would say. And then let me get a magnet out. Ah, welcome to my collection of magnets. Huh. Here's the side. You can see that blue shift to it. It's almost like a, um, a purpley blue iridescent glitter that's in there. And then let's see what it looks like here. Ooh, okay. So now that I am moving the pigments around, that uh, purple iridescence, that purple blue iridescence really is coming through. I don't know if it's showing super well on camera. But the magnetic particles seem really easy to move. Let me show you. There we go, there's just that basic velvet look where all of the magnetized particles are pulled to the middle and it makes it a lot more of like a silvery color in the center. And then those like dark, dark purple blue pigments really show on the side once you separate them from like the magnetic pigments. That's super pretty. It's reminding me of like the, the Divock New Moon collection I have had my eyes on that collection for quite some time now. I haven't pulled the trigger because it is a little bit expensive. It's like $200 and I'm not sure I need every shade from the collection. I think if they do start selling them individually, I will pick up a few of the shades, but this is just really reminding me of that and it's so gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. I would love to do like a glass look with this, with the, um, Magnetic gels where you paint on a layer, you put it uh, over or you put it under a matte top coat and then you paint on lines of clear gel and you get like a really pretty glass look. Yeah, super excited to use this. That's gorgeous. 
And then this is a magnetic shell from their autumn collection. And this is number 13. And it is this beautiful orangey red magnetic gel. Let's see. There we go. This was very fall like. Almost the perfect fall magnetic gel. It's got a really pretty like maroon to yellow orangey green almost shift to it this one's really nice a good dupe for this i would say is probably the born pretty red magnetic gel i just recently used it in a game of thrones house of the dragon inspired set i will link that um, in the corner right here if you want to give it a watch but that's like a good cheaper dupe for this but this is very nice Pretty. It's almost more like purpley when you when you actually paint it on. I'm sure with a black background it would look a little bit different. Put it over. There we go. When you put it over a black background, those like gold yellow tones really come through. Over a white background, it looks a little bit more like pinky purpley. Oops. So let me go ahead and Pull this. Ooh, that's gorgeous. Oh my gosh, that works so well. I hope the camera is catching it, but it's just pulling those warm toned magnetic particles to the center in such a pretty way. Oh my gosh, I am definitely in love with this one here. That's so nice. Look, you can see it moving the pigments around super easily on camera. It's almost like a full rainbow spectrum in here. You've got like a yellow shift, a green shift. There's like the purpley pigment in there. It's like a pinky tone too. Okay, I'm gonna have to try more of the Reposo magnetic gels at some point, cause this is just absolutely lovely. And here's what it looks like over black. Super stunning still. That yellow gold shift really comes through over a black polish. Very pretty. So I did get two magnetic gels from F Gel 2 from the nail. These don't have like a duochrome shift or anything. They're from the same collection, I believe. Again, I'll link everything down below. Yeah, they're FG165 and FG164. And I, I noticed I didn't have like a really strong blue and green magnetic gel in my collection. So I did pick these up. I love the packaging of the From the Nail products. This little gold embossed label is just so gorgeous. And they even added like little stars here. That's so cute. So here is what, ooh, oh my gosh. Here's what the blue looks like. That is absolutely stunning. Come on camera, focus please. It has so many different glittery particles in it. It's all one tone, so it's all one blue color, but it almost looks like there are different sized magnetic particles in there. I'm not 100% sure. I am just picturing a gorgeous, gorgeous Ravenclaw set with this. The ideas are already flowing. Okay, let me swatch this. That's so pretty. Okay, so the base of this is quite clear, actually. Like, you're not going to get that deep blue color just by painting this alone. It definitely needs to go on top of, like, a, a separate blue base. But I'm excited to see the magnetic shift. So there's just a thin layer. Over black, you can really see those blues. A lot of magnetic gels, they do tend to look best over like a color or black because in order to let those pigments really shine, they need a base that's pretty transparent. If the base is too opaque, you're not gonna be able to see the sparkle from the magnetic particles. 
So I'm like never upset when a magnetic gel has like a sheer base to it. Just means the shine will be that much more apparent. So let me magnetize the particles here. Ooh, this is such a sparkly magnetic gel. Like the particles themselves are slightly bigger, I can tell. So you get this really nice, shiny, yet sparkly effect. I can already see it here. I don't know if you can on camera. Oh yeah, you can on camera. Ooh, yeah, there you go. Gorgeous. <gasps> Ooh, that's so shiny. It looks like a galaxy. Absolutely stunning. Ugh, I love this. It looks like the night sky. So many ideas running through my brain right now. Big, big fan of that one. Okay, so that one was FG164. And this is FG165 from the same collection. Let's see what the green has in store. I love green. Ooh, okay. And this is more of like a, a cool toned green. Not super warm. It's got that same really like sparkly base to it. Very pretty. I love that. Not as deep as I thought though. Honestly, I was expecting like a little bit more of a darker green. This is still really pretty though. Look at that sparkle. Okay, let's watch this one. I'll be honest, these swatch sticks I have are not like the highest quality. Um, so if you guys buy nice high quality plastic swatch sticks from somewhere and you can point me in the right direction, let me know. Cause these are just from, I think like Timu or AliExpress or something like that. And they're really, they're kind of like scuffed up in some places. They're not the best quality. Here is that green. Again, that base is pretty sheer, but that's to be expected. Ooh, very nice. This one's a little bit more subtle, I would say, than the blue was. Still really pretty, but not quite as like in your face of a punch to this one. Go ahead and magnetize it. Ooh, but the magnet's really pulling that, that glitter forward. Do you like that? This would make a really pretty fairy set, I think some sort of like forest fairy design. Okay, and that's what it looks like magnetize. Again, this one's a little bit more subtle, I will say. I think if you're gonna pick up any color, I would go with that blue. That blue is just stunning. This one's more subtle, but still very pretty. Very like uh, forest vibes. Really cute for a fairy set, maybe. Okay, and last but not least, I did pick up six of Zillaboo's new brand, or I guess, I think I've been saying it wrong the whole time. I'm pretty sure the pronunciation is Zillabo, um, or Zillaboo. I just say Zillaboo. Um, it sounded right in my head, but I, I think it's actually Zillaboo. Um, hopefully somebody can correct me, but they came out with their own brand called Gel Monster, and it's this really cute concept where each gel product comes with like a little um, trading card, a little collecting card. So these two I picked up earlier this year. I never did a like haul video on them or any sort of um, video showing them off. I have used them in two videos if you want like a full sort of look at how they perform. I used the black in my recent Game of Thrones nails and I used the white in my Angel Rococo design. Both performed absolutely wonderfully. They're so, so opaque that the white is definitely one coat and the black is like a two coater, but you really only need two coats because there's like some small areas where there's some sheerness peeking through. Definitely the most opaque black I've ever used when it comes to a gel polish. 
so so happy to have this and so i wanted to pick up some other colors to try from their collection so i'll swatch them all but let me open the ones that i've already opened and used so each one comes really well packed um you get the product itself the gel polish and then the little trading card and the trading card i appreciate comes in these uh, protective plastic little like case um if you're somebody who likes trading cards like pokemon this is going to be right up your alley if you already have your own case to put these in you could easily store them in like a like a little trading card booklet or if you don't have your own case like these are a really good um, short-term solution to keep them in and the cards are also in another sleeve here for protection and if you want you can remove them um, I'm probably going to keep them in this little sleeve because I, I like it. I like that it's going to keep these nice and pristine. But look, for each of these polishes, they came up with a little character. Sorry, an experiment. And for each card, they actually have a little profile. It says Experimon 063, simply known as Midnight, stands as a solitary experiment with no evolutions. Midnight can appear and disappear using any form of darkness. It can even manipulate darkness using it offensively or defensively. And so these cards, I think, are just the most creative way to explain sort of the background of a gel product, to add some fun to a gel product and give it more character, more story. They also give you details about the actual viscosity, opacity, and retention. Um, most of the polishes I've seen have a retention of five. This one has a viscosity of four and opacity of five. So it's a great way for you to tell right off the bat how many coats you're going to need for it and about how thick it is. So I love that that information is put here and it's meant to mimic like the stats of a Pokemon, which I love. And as you can see, it is cruelty-free, vegan-free and hema free which is very nice. So for any of you who have like a gel allergy, you really might consider checking out Gel Monsta because all of their collection is HEMA free from my understanding. And um, they just have a really good range right now. I'm excited to see them adding more ranges and the color payoff on these things, so good. And it's actually kind of crazy how opaque this is, especially for a black polish. And I've used this at this point and I had no problems curing even though it was really opaque. So look at this. That is one wipe of black. Super, super opaque. The only area where it gets a little bit sheer is like on a bend in the nail where you have some, some texture, some raised areas where it's not um, brushing on really smoothly. That's like the only reason you might need a second coat. As if you're doing like a really thin layer and you go over a bend and it shears out just a little bit. But honestly, if you do like a, a pretty thick layer you can kind of avoid that sheerness and you really could get away with a single coat of this. Like, look at that. That's crazy to me. In a black gel polish, that is nice. Big fan of that. And it's, again, HEMA-free, vegan, which a lot of polish brands now are going towards HEMA-free. I really appreciate that. I wear gloves like all the time if I'm dealing with um, gel, just because I personally know I have really sensitive skin. I'm already allergic to a lot of metals, like my ear piercings, uh, the holes uh, of the piercings in my ear will get really irritated if I'm not wearing gold plated jewelry. So I don't want to risk it in developing a gel allergy because I just, I know my skin and how it gets quite irritable. So I appreciate all of the brands that are going HEMA free. So yeah, super pleased with the black. The white too, let me show you this one. And this adorable little guy is called White. I'm not going to read each card just because that would take forever. But you can pause and look at it here. This one has um, full viscosity, full opacity, full retention. 
and it is a really nice just straight white color that I would say is definitely a one coater. Here you go, you can see this is a little bit more viscous than the last one. I certainly agree with it being like a, a five for viscosity. If you want to see somebody who swatches every single Gel Monster product, I will link her video right up here. I love watching Evie from Long Hair Pretty Nails, and she recently did a like a full swatch um, video where she looked at every single color in the collection because they sent it to her, which super generous of them. And I think it's also a great way for people to see the different colors. That's actually how I picked out my colors is by watching her video and seeing which colors I really wanted. So here is the white. They're not wrong when they say a five for viscosity. It is quite thick, but look at that coverage. Single coat, okay? One coat, perfectly even coverage. The consistency of these, by the way, is super nice. Like it self levels so well, even though it is on the thicker side and you get great, amazing, even coverage. I feel like I'm using whiteout, honestly. So, so nice. I swear it sounds like I am um, endorsed by Gel Monster. <clears throat> Would love to be, I'm not. I'm just super impressed with the opacity of their colors so far. So I'm excited to try out some of the colors because I've only used so far the black and white and see if their color gels are just as opaque. Let's see, why don't we do this brown next? So I wanted a really nice like dark brown color. I don't really have um, something high quality in my collection that fits that bill. So I picked up this one. This is in the shade Espresso, Espresso, Espresso Bean Brown. This is Experimon Espresso. Look at him. He's like a little monkey. And this has a viscosity of three, an opacity of four, and a retention of five. Here's the little information on him. So I'm expecting this to be a little bit thinner a little bit more um, sheer, maybe a two coater, we shall see. So here's what it looks like out of the bottle. It's just a really nice like chocolatey brown. I would say it's not too warm toned, not too cool toned. My problem with browns is sometimes they're a little bit too warm toned. This one is just a nice dark brown. Yep, that's just like a nice chocolatey brown. I do see the um, opacity being a four, so I do think this one will need another coat just for nice even coverage. Well, maybe not, let's see. Let me let it settle. Maybe I won't. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, if I let it settle and kind of uh, get rid of those, the ridges I made when painting, Actually, I think you could probably get away with just just one coat. Here's what it looks like. Just nice chocolatey brown. Very good. Yeah, actually that kind of self-leveled really nicely. And aside from like spots there where the nail curves, there's really no patchiness. I think with these, like if you use a thick enough uh, a thick enough coat, you really won't have many problems with needing two coats. So yeah, not the most exciting color, but a basic that I wanted. It was a nice dark brown, and I am pretty pleased with this one. Again, that's Espresso Ape. This is the Espresso, Espresso Bean Brown. This is experiment number seven. Next up is this gorgeous green. So my one, my one issue with the collection I will say is that the brand uses AI to um, pull together different color groups. So supposedly they used AI technology to pull together all of the like most popular green shades for one collection, 
the most popular pink shades. Within the whole um, brand, there are multiple collections within each, each color. I personally did not love the lighter green shades. I think AI um, did them a little bit dirty when it came to the lighter green shades. I would have loved um, some more cool toned greens. A lot of the lighter green shades are very yellow toned, very warm toned. And don't get me wrong, I love a good green. I actually like a good like um, like pea green, like a matcha green. Um, but a lot of the lighter greens were looking a little too like a uh, you know baby pukey green for me. But this shade I was excited to try. This is um, Botanicong. Yeah, Botanicong Experimon number zero four one, color shade forest green. And I can already tell from this one I'm going to need two coats. But here's the information. Ooh, yeah, that's a really nice, deep, like, leafy, foresty green. That's pretty. Ooh, yes. Super excited to try this one. Beautiful. Let me go ahead and swatch it. Okay, so let's see how the opacity is on this one, because it did say it was only level two. You know, honestly, even for level two, like... I don't know, this one seems almost as opaque as the brown, which I think was like a level three, right? Like, yeah, two coats for this one. But honestly, the color payoff's still really nice. There's that green, it's a gorgeous, I would say like perfect middle between cool and warm toned green and a really nice dark foresty shade. I almost would be okay with a shade deeper. I'll have to go back and look at the collection. I think this might've been the deepest green, but I'd almost be okay with one even deeper. So let's do two coats just to see. Ooh, okay, there we go. Yeah, I would recommend for this one at least you are gonna need two coats just to get that full color payoff. There we go. Super nice, like evergreen, foresty, dark green. Really like that shade, beautiful. Up next is this purple color. This is Experimon Tattletale. Here he is. It's like a cute little cat with a skull on its tail. That's pretty cute. Color shade is lavender purple, number 051, viscosity 3, opacity 3. Here's his information. I would say comparable to like maybe a psychic type if you are a Pokemon fan. But I wanted this color because I don't have like a really nice green lavender purple. This one seemed like a really true lavender. So here's this one. Ooh, this is pretty. Definitely a gorgeous lavender shade. Very nice, like true lavender, not too pink toned, not too cool toned. Very nice. going on pretty smoothly. I think this one's definitely going to be a two-coater too. Well, maybe not. I don't know. If you paint these on evenly enough and use kind of like a thicker layer, they seem to self-level out really nicely and give you pretty even cover, uh, color coverage. Like, look at that. That actually might be okay with just one coat. Yeah, super pretty lavender shade. I love purple. Um, when I was younger, I wore like exclusively purple from the ages of probably five to about 10. It was so bad that on one vacation that my family went on to Nevada, 
we had the opportunity to do um, horseback riding in the desert and I was in an all purple outfit. We're talking like purple pants, purple shoes, purple top, purple hat. And our tour guide, he was, he was funny. He was nice, but he called me Barney. <laughs> he had little nicknames for everybody on the tour. And I was Barney because I was in all purple. Next up, I got a light blue color as well. I was really going for some nice, uh, like a variety of colors in cream formulas that I don't really have. So this is Barum Experimon 044. Here's the information. This one's going to be more opaque than the last one it looks like. This is in the color pastel blue. Here's his info. And here's what this looks like in the bottle. Ooh, that one's nice and blue. Very pretty. Ooh, I really like this color. I was looking for more of like a, like an aqua blue rather than a cool tone blue. Cause I actually have a blue that I really like. It's the blue sky. What is it? Signing C, Signing C. I used it recently in my video where I reviewed the Blue Sky polishes. That polish was gorgeous. It's not quite as opaque as the um, Gel Monster polishes. I will say there's a bit more of a sheerness to the Blue Sky brand. The lighter colors though, I really like because even though they're slightly sheer, the color payoff is really even, but that blue is a little bit more cool tone, more of like a periwinkle. And this one is a really nice like aqua blue. Love that. Formula is so nice and creamy too. I actually like that it's a bit on the thicker side. It means that you can put the polish on and it will not be streaky whatsoever. Look at how nicely that's self-leveled. That's a gorgeous shade. Definitely a one coater. Don't need anything else. Super, super pretty blue. Very nice. I'm excited to have this in my collection. And last but not least, I did pick up a yellow because I don't have like a lot of like nice bright yellow colors. I have some really nice syrup muted yellows. I have the Jinbi Sweet Tea muted yellow. I have one from Yogurt Nail Korea. But I wanted just a good opaque bright yellow shade. So I got this one here. And this is Sunyang Experimon 033 in the color shade bright yellow. It looks like it's going to be a two coater. And then here's the information. like a little sheep of sorts here's the color in the bottle and I appreciate that the bottles are all painted like the colors that they're supposed to be that way it makes it really easier for you to pick which one that you need Ooh, okay I can already tell this is definitely a bright yellow there we go it's almost like a like an orangey yellow like a goldenrod, which is what I was looking for. I wanted something that really packed a punch when it came to the color payoff. So that's beautiful. I think two coats, uh, yeah, might serve it well, but this is such a bright summery yellow. Beautiful. It's interesting. It almost looks on the edges where it's slightly more sheer. It's almost like a neon -y yellow color. Very interesting. Beautiful formula though. Once again, it self levels so, so smoothly. Let me go ahead and cure this and we'll do a second coat. Now, the only reason I didn't pick up a red is because I actually have um, already quite a few red shades. I have some from Born Pretty. 
um, and I just got that blue sky collection that had a bunch of red shades. So I didn't get a red. I also did not get an orange because I'll be honest, I'm just, I'm not a huge orange fan. Um, I definitely prefer other colors. So the colors that I picked up this time were just kind of like some basics to add to my collection. I am excited to see what other colors that they come out with though because I'm really liking the formula of these and they're not that expensive. It's, I believe, $16 if there's no sale. Usually you can find at least a 10% off coupon for Zillaboo. And so they're, in terms of like a Korean gel brand, which these are produced in Korea, even though they are from Zillaboo, which is an American company, um, they're, they're not that expensive really. There we go. Yeah, the second coat just adds uh, that much needed golden tone to the overall shade. And there we go. That is bright yellow. Very pretty. Very happy with all of these. So here are all of my gel monster swatches. I think I got a good range of colors to start with. I am excited to see what other colors they come out with, especially in their green collection, because like I said right now, the greens are just a little bit too warm tone for my liking. I'd like to see what other tones were green that they release. But yeah, I'm super happy with each color. I think it has such a nice creamy formula. It has great opacity, even the ones that you need two coats for. I feel like you barely needed two coats. You might be able to get away with even one. So yeah, very happy with these. And that's actually everything that I purchased in my last couple Zillaboo orders. So let me go ahead and lay everything out for you while I give you my final thoughts. So aside from saying the name wrong, um, I am really happy with this order from Zillaboo. Zillaboo, oh my goodness. I would really like to try out more of the Gel Monster products and more of the Reposo products. I thought that the Reposo Magnetic Gels were just super gorgeous. Um, both this one here, that really nice mauvey purple, and the, where is it? Here it is and the Pulling Autumn collection. These two were just stunning, honestly, um, especially the, the red to orange color. I thought that was so pretty. I really liked the F gel from the Nail Magnetic Gels. I would say if you're gonna pick one up, definitely the blue over the green. The blue was just so vibrant and vivid. The green was a little bit more muted than I expected, I'll be honest. Um, still really pretty. I would say great for like a foresty set. Maybe really good actually to pair with this color. But I would say the blue was definitely my favorite out of these two. I'm excited to play around with this sheet. These Aura sheets from Bonnie B. And I would, like I said, eventually like to try the powders. But they are, they are a little bit on the pricey side, I'll admit. This I'm excited to use for textured mirror effects, for textured chrome looks. I think it's going to be really good because it seems to hold its shape very well. We'll see how it performs though. So I will give you an update at a later date. These two as well seem like really good embossing gels, something that you can put a chrome powder over or just something that you can use on its own to add a little bit of texture, a little bit of that raised look to your nail. So these are really nice as well. All of my brushes, I am pretty pleased with, excited to use them. Let me put all of those here. <laughs> when I do these um, bits here, I'm really just trying to like lay everything out for a thumbnail. So it might seem a little um, particular how I'm like organizing all of this. That's because I'm trying to get a good, um, a good thumbnail.
I would definitely say if you're somebody who's beginning your nail art journey and you have some extra money, try some nice brushes. That is one thing that really helped me up my um, hand painted game is just having the right tools at the right size because to get the really fine details, um, it, it makes sense, right, that you'd need a really fine brush. So definitely, if you have the option to, if you have the budget, I fully understand that not everybody um, is operating on uh, the ability to spend hundreds of dollars on nail products. I totally get that. So make do with what you have. But if you do have the budget, strongly recommend like some, some nicer brushes to really help you up your nail game. I do wanna do um, sometime in the close future, like a, a luxury versus kind of like a, a cheaper dupe video. I guess it's not dupes. I wanna make a favorites video and I wanna show off some of the products I regularly use, but it's not gonna be just like the Korean products that I use all the time. Cause again, I know they're not in everybody's price range. I wanna do like both my luxury products but also some of the items that um, I have that are budget friendly. So yeah, this is everything I ordered. I'm pretty pleased with all of it. I will definitely be saying more in upcoming videos when I use these products and actually give them a good try. This is really just to swatch them and give you an idea of what things look like in case you want to pick them up for yourselves. But thank you so much for being here and for watching my videos. I hope you enjoyed this haul. Check the description for any discount links I might have. I don't have one for Zillabu yet. Um, that would be amazing. Notice I said yet because I would absolutely love to be an affiliate with Zillabu. Zillabu, I have to start saying it right first, but I do have one for Born Pretty and one for Sweetie Nail Supply. You can check the description for both of those. Thank you again so much for being here. Check out my social links below. If you want to join my Discord, check out my Instagram. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your night. Thank you again, and I will see you next time. Bye.